is the day when we'll have all Star Trek tricorder functionality in our smartphones almost here. Welcome to Tech First with John Goodseer. So I've always wanted a Star Trek tricorder, right? It's basically this mobile sensing platform that the crew of the Starship Enterprise used to examine everything. Don't tell Trekkies, but that's, of course, fantasy. Perhaps, however, not for long. We might almost be getting there in reality, thanks to some new tech from a company called Trinamics and one of the biggest companies in mobile, Qualcomm. To get the scoop, we're chatting with Dr. Wilfred Hermes. So, Wilfred, what have you built? So, we built a spectrometer, a spectrometer which can be integrated in future into smartphone, a spectrometer, an NIR spectrometer. It's about, yeah, the technology which is uh, used in years in industry. And what we did is we miniaturized it and it fits now to the palm of your hands and we go one step further to integrate it into smartphone. Excellent. So you're using onboard sensors, correct? Somebody doesn't have to attach something. You're using onboard sensors on the phone already. Do most phones already have that? No, it's an optical sensor. We send out light uh, with a light source. It's reflected by the target. And then uh, we get out spectra. These spectra we compare with different uh, data sets and then we get out the results. So it's an optical method. You can think about it's like a camera for the invisible. Very, very cool. How sensitive is it and what kind of range does it have? Mm, so how should I answer this question? What you can do with NIR spectroscopy is you can measure different molecules. You can barely measure all organic molecules down to a level of, let's say, one volume percent. And what we developed is we developed the full fingerprint in the wavelength range. So we start from 1,000 nanometer to 3,000 nanometer. And that's the range where molecules have their fingerprint. Yes. With your human, human eyes, you cannot see that. So human eyes, um, let's say they can see colors like blue, yellow, red. You can look up to 800 nanometers and we can cover up to 3000 nanometer, getting the complete information out of some molecules. So Excellent. to answer your question, we, the range is organic molecules down to 1%. Wow. Wow, very cool. Okay, so we're going to get into how this can be used, what people can do with it, how you see commercial applications, all that other stuff in just a moment. But you're announcing a fairly major partner today, Qualcomm, uh, which is you know obviously one of the largest companies in smartphone tech, uh, mobile tech, the technology that goes into the devices that we all use. Talk about why that matters and what Qualcomm is going to bring to this partnership. As you pointed out, so Qualcomm is the uh, major, or it's one major player in the ecosystem, is the world leader in wireless technology. And we are proud that Qualcomm today presents our near spectroscopy solution at their tech event in virtual Hawaii. So we work together here, bringing our vision of spectroscopy to, to smartphones. We work here together and yeah, we're happy that Qualcomm announced it today. What is Qualcomm doing with you? You've got the technology. What is Qualcomm providing? Is Are they providing some hardware, some software, some calculation? What's the part that they're doing? Mm, I cannot go in all the details due to um, non-disclosement agreements. But what I could say is, of course, we need for our application, we need a, a computational power a world-class processor. And that's what um, Qualcomm is having in their hand, the Snapdragon, which we need to get um, fast and actionable results out of our spectra. Excellent. So it's it, it's funny. It's amazing. We, we the New technology is coming out all the time, incredible things. And we often see that it's first implemented in the beauty and fashion industry. Uh, this is no different. Um, it's the beauty and fashion industry strikes again. Your first application is in skincare, correct? What What is it doing? Okay, so yeah, that's correct. We measure the moisture and lipid level of skin. Yeah. So you you point your spectrometer to your skin, and then you get the information: what is your moisture level? What's your lipid level? What can you do with this information? So think about that: you in the morning or in the afternoon would like to have a uh, cream on your hands, you need a body lotion, and then you get 
the um, lotion which is fits to your um, habitus of your skin. So you get the um, recommendation for action, which kind of cream of lotion you should need. Excellent. So you got totally customized, personalized, in fact, in the moment, customized exactly what you need based on what your skin wants right now. Does that take multiple measurements? Is there something different for the face, for the hands, other things like that? It is different, so the um, skin differs to each other, so the moisture and lipid level. Um, but for each uh, position where you need a different hand cream or different um, skin uh, face cream, you have to make one measurement and you get out the result within a second. Yeah. What other health implications do you think this technology could have? I mean, you're obviously being able to scan and see the skin and composition, other things like that. Are there other things that you see, think that you can uh, determine in the future? Sure. So you're asking now for health. The second one is not in the area of health. It's in the area of food, but also related to health. So here we measure uh, macro ingredients of food. We measure protein level, we measure carbohydrates, fat content of different food. Um, when it comes to health industry, we are so where we're working on, which is a bit on the on the longer way, is on biomarkers of humans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So skin is the surface, uh, and then we can also look into, into the humans and get out information about um, yeah, what's going on in us. Really interesting what you, measure, what you mentioned about measuring the composition of food, because I track a bunch of things with my health. Uh, I use an Apple Watch to track my fitness levels. I use an app to track what I eat and how many calories I ingest and stuff like that but it's imprecise, you know, how much of, is it exactly? And is what I'm eating exactly the thing that I'm entering in this app that has a, you know, a defined list of what you might have. And I, the, the Holy grail here is an app that you simply point your phone at the camera at, at the, what you're going to eat and tells you how much it is, what it is, knows what it is, knows how, uh, you know, how many calories it has. Do you foresee something like that being possible with some of your technology? Exactly. So what you pointed out, what um, the Apple and the, um, the um, Android have already is on the way to what we are going. And what they are missing is a sensor uh, which can look into the food, into the molecules. And this is um, what we are doing. So we bring now the spectrometer into the smartphone and then you can add this information to the apps which are already there. That's amazing. Uh, I'm looking forward to that. That's that's near magic almost. Uh, of course, any advanced technology is, is like magic in some way. So those are a bunch of health implications, food implications. Uh, what other things could this be used for? I mean, um, you, you get, determining what matters around you, that there seem to be a ton of uh, uses for that sort of technology, correct? Uh, there are a lot of applications and use cases around. We cannot do everything, also to point it out clear here. Um, what we do right now is, uh, for example, we measure different plastics. Think about to sorting plastics and then uh, put them uh, back into the loop right, for sorting and recycling. We are measuring um, coffee content of coffee. Yeah? What kind of coffee is inside? What, what, what is the content? We are measuring, think about um, if you give your toys to your kids. Yeah? Is the plasticizer in the toy? Yes or no? So a lot of different applications. Go to the um, supermarket and think about the meat which is in front of you. Is it from pig? If it is from a cow? What is the ratio? You can measure your textile. Is it out of wool? It is out of cotton? This is already possible right now. Yeah? Um, we are working on it to bring it to smartphone, but you already can buy it right now. We have a handheld uh, spectrometer. Uh, which fits in the palm of your hands. It's connected to, to the smartphone. And these use cases, which I mentioned, um, you can do use already right now. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, so you're building it into the smartphone, at least to some degree. What other sensor technology do you think will be built into smartphones over the next few years? This is a good question. Um, to answer it in two ways. Uh, one way is um, Tronemics, the company where I'm working have two t technologies. One is IR, the other one is 3D, measuring depth information. And I see this um, technology in smartphone as well. As a chemist, I think um, we are on the way, and you pointed out in the beginning, we are on the way to three-quarter. 
but this is only one step. What I would like to see and, and what I believe will come in future is more analytics, uh, lab analytics into smartphone. Yeah? So here we're talking about IR spectroscopy, but we can think about also X-ray, NMR. It's not possible today, but I see this will be the trend in future to bring the laboratory to everyone. Amazing. Amazing. So Wilfred, this podcast is about tech that's changing the world and innovators who are shaping the future. What are the most important implications of this technology in your opinion? Mm. So what we do is we make the invisible visible. Yeah? Um, you get information with our technology about molecules never possible to um, all consumers before. We make the invisible visible, we bring the lab to everyone. Wonderful, excellent. Well, Wilfred, you've been a trooper. Uh, this was challenging. You guys were filling with tech the whole time as we were trying <laughs> to get ready for this thing. Yeah, that's I, I know from personal experience that doing a show or a podcast or going on stage when you're fiddling with your tech is not easy. It is challenging. I do appreciate it. Thank you for uh, joining us on Tech First. Uh, we may have lost Wilfred. I'm not entirely sure, but uh, whether we have or haven't, thank you as well, the audience, for joining us on Tech First. My name is John Kutsir. You can get a full transcript of this podcast in about a week at johnkutsir.com. The story at Forbes will come out right after that. Full video, of course, is always available on my YouTube channel. Thank you for joining. Until next time, this is John Kutsir with Tech First. Tech First.